Hello, my name is Triadar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Dwarven Throne Room in Minecraft. Oh boy. Let's get started. So, let's walk inside and take a tour of the Throne Room. Now, this is going to be one of the larger and more complex things I've tried to describe, so... It's going to be a pretty big project. But I hope that you will like it. It's got several previous projects combined into it. It's got all three of the Dwarven statues. It's got uh, the, the pillared hallways from the mines of Moria. It's got, of course, the galaxy up there in the ceiling. It's got the Dwarven nether portal back there behind the throne. And uh, if we walk a little bit closer, we can also see that we have a nice starry floor down there as well to complement the, the galaxy we have up here on the ceiling. Get a little altitude. The, this floor looks best when you view it from above here, with the end rods facing up with several layers of black glass uh, sandwiched in between those. It gives a very nice, pleasing uh, starfield effect, I think. Uh, the same thing is, of course, going on up there for the galaxy. And, of course, the galaxy was made for this room, with the octagonal section up there and, and everything. So, uh, let's take a look around the room. Here's where we came from. We've got a number of Guardian Dwarven statues. Back here, we've got the hammer, the axe, another hammer, another axe, and two shields on either side of the throne. So here's the Dwarven throne itself. We want to uh, have a seat here. Uh, but this is a nice place if you want to look down and keep watch over the cosmos. You can, of course, do so down there, or, or you, can, you can look up there as well. You've got a number of vantage points to, to watch from around here. I think it's a nice, pleasing space. Uh, and also to the, um, not to the sides, but around back, there is, of course, a stair for you to uh, get up here and access your throne. Uh, we're not going to go through that because that'll send me to the nether and we don't. there's nothing in the, the nether to see today. Uh, but let's go ahead and um, shed a little bit more light on the situation. Now that we, we've gotten the, we've seen it with uh, without the potion, so let's see it more with it so we can see more detail. Uh, so here we of course have the, the starry floor looks the same. But as we look around, we can see a lot more detail that I've shoved into the building here. The panels behind there are uh, designed uniquely for the throne room here. It's got a new floor pattern as well. The columns are the same. and uh, But I believe the coffers up here in the ceiling have been a, a bit more redesigned and simplified as well. And we do have, of course, the intricate uh, octagonal section here, which is entirely uh, new and unique. Uh, to this building, or I should say this room, because it's designed to be just an underground room. But still nice and colorful. Of course, we got the, the throne chair here, and of course, I just recycled the door of another portal and just, you know, squished that directly between two of these columns here to make a nice, uh, nice dramatic back for the throne chair. So if we drop down here, take a look around for a moment. Now I've tried to do quite a lot of hidden lighting in here as we've seen, but there may be some, some other places you're probably gonna wanna add just a bit more lighting if you're doing this uh, in survival. And now that we've taken a look at that, let's take a look at what's on the outside, uh, which is a whole lot of nothing. Because it's a dwarven building, so you know it's designed to be underground completely and uh, you've seen the dimensions here. And I, I give the dimensions for the room, and I think separately I give the uh, I might give the dimensions for this little entrance tunnel. But this is a standard entrance entrance a corridor from the mines of Moria. But as you can see here, we just have a big cube of uh, cobbled deep slate on the outside here. Uh, and I should remark that uh, the numbers you've seen probably, and I put a disclaimer in the materials list. It's way too much cobbled deep slate because I don't think you're gonna, you're not gonna have to, you know, 
dig out this much cobble deep slate. All we're going to have to do is build the interior shell of the building and the rest of it can either be just air gap behind it or you can try and do it uh, try and do it solid as you go and just mine out what you need from uh, from you know just wherever you want to put this uh, but yeah so 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 with that said uh, a major caveat on the materials list it the materials list is going to be right for a lot uh, of the materials uh, but it's going to be wrong um, for the call deep slate most especially it's going to give, um, I mean, you definitely won't need any more than I list, uh, but you for sure uh, won't need, um, um, you may need a lot less as well, because all we have to do is just build the interior here. So there's not going to be just a whole bunch more, but I have, I have put it pretty tight uh, because the, the walls here uh, just on the other side of this cobbled deep slate are the wall panels, so it's done really tightly, so it's not going to have a whole lot of uh, extra wasted space. Uh, but yeah, so if you do need that, it's of course available in the video description for both Java and Bedrock versions. And uh, I may even throw in a schematic on it too, uh, this time around. So I think uh, with, with all that explanation out of the way, we should start with the phases. Because we have a uh, hundred and, and, so, and something, I forget how tall this is. It, it's in whatever the, uh, it's in the materials list for the dimensions. We have quite a lot of phases to get through. On this building, I don't know if we'll get it all into one video. It might take two. Uh, so the first thing we're going to need to do is, uh, this building is broken into distinct sections. Um, now, for the lowest most section here, for the starry floor, for, well, we should. I should go back. Let's go back in here and take a look at that while I describe it. So big, it takes a while to just to get back to the doorway. All right, so out. Yeah. Uh, so the first section, of course, the story floor here is sunken into the ground a bit. So we're going to have to start uh, several levels below where your tunnel, your connecting tunnel, if you built in the other dwarven things, is going to be coming out. And uh, the next section there will be uh, from here to the top of the floor all the way to up here where the galaxy starts. Could benefit from another potion, I think. Uh, is going to be the middle section of the bill. That's going to take the longest. And then the last section up here is going to be the galaxy itself. Uh, now, uh, th this galaxy has been already, uh, it has its own tutorial video done in much greater depth than I would be able to do in this series. So when we get up to this point, I, I will help you with uh, citing the box that the galaxy is put in. Uh, but uh, to finish the building off, you're going to have to refer back to the galaxy tutorial as well. Because even if I did try and put that in this series, I mean, it would just be, you know, like a part three or four. And I think it's better to have its own separate video. Uh, because you might want to use this galaxy in rooms other than than this is why I did that. And of course, um, all these dwarven statues, they've got time lapse tutorials for those. But as we go, uh, I will try and give brief looks at these slice by slice as we go. Uh, but I'm not going to dwell on those too much either. All right, so with all the exposition out of the way, I think, ow. Uh, I think it's time to, to get on with the rest of the tutorial. Uh, now, for the reference model here, you can see I've taken the exterior and I've wrapped these uh, helpful blocks around. These aren't included in, in these are not included in the dimensions or the materials list. These are just extra blocks I put on the exterior to help us keep track of where we're at as we go, because it's such a big building, and I haven't I didn't optimize it to remove all the excess cobble deep slate, like I said, so. Uh, all right, so now if you have a, an existing dwarven tunnel, let's actually go back over here for that. If you have an existing dwarven tunnel from the other tutorials and you want to add this room to the end of one of your tunnels, um, you need to, we're gonna need to start down from the floor, from the floor level here, we need to start down, count the floor for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks 
is going to be as far down as we need to go. So from the entrance, well, let's go back here for a moment. From the entrance corridor, uh, you recognize the floor pattern here, right? So I'm not quite sure where that interfaces in the, uh, let me just um, uh, knock out a couple of blocks here so I can get a bearing on that. All right, so you can see here the, the wall for the chamber is going to be starting at this line here. So the rest of this, behind the torches, not including the torches, but behind the torches and on back, is going to be uh, that pattern there for your corridor design, like so. Standard Dwarven Corridor from the Minds of Moria series. We'll, we'll go through the corridor as we go, but if you have an existing corridor, you need to know that information before we start. Uh, so let's kind of, I think the center line ought to be around... That looks right. From there, so the adjoining wall is going to be uh, this line here. Like so. So let's see how far back. So that's going to be from corridor. It's going to be what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15. 18, 19, 20. It's going to be 20 blocks. And then on the 21st block here, this is where we're going to be starting to uh, excavate the room. And for this, you don't have, you don't have to excavate uh, until we get 10 block levels up. What we really need to do is just build the starry floor first. And uh, to do that, let's see, do I have any... There could be quite a lot of excess. Yeah, so it's an, it's an octagonal floor. So all we really need to do is put down a square of, I assume you're going to be using blackstone instead of all the obsidian I have down here. Uh, but let's count over to where the blackstone should start. Uh, so what? Uh, one, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, uh, what, 37, 38, and on the 39th block, this is where we want to start our obsidian. And it's just going to be a big box. I know the corners here are, are nibbled out of it, but it can just be a big box of, um, of uh, blackstone. And I think perhaps for this one, we might ought to go on to the next phase, so I can give you the dimensions just for the octagon, so we don't waste too much extra blackstone, probably. And uh, I, I'll, <clears throat> instead of counting out whatever huge number this is going to be, this is over 100 and something, from here all the way down to, can't really draw the sentence out anymore, all the way down to here is going to be the uh, first dimensions listed in the uh, materials list and then of course from here all the way down to all the way come on all, all the way down to here is going to be the same number so the room itself is going to be just a square on the bottom and then it's going to go up for uh, whatever the third number was in the materials list on on the first uh, the first section I should have Refresh my memory on that before I started the uh, the video, but I forgot. Uh, so for the next phase, uh, we already know where about where the center line is and the dimensions to get all the way to this block here from the corridor. So let's count out the octagon. Uh, so let's count out one, two, three, five, six, nine, twelve. Uh, what, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27 blocks. So that's uh, it's going to be 27 blocks straight across. And then it's going to be for a diagonal. It's going to be, what, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 
18, 21, 22 diagonal blocks. And then it should be another, uh, what was it, 18, 3, no, was it 20? Well, count it again. 3, 9, 12, uh, what, 15, 18, 21, 22, 28, 24, 26, 27 blocks to get to there. And then 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 18, 21, 22 blocks to get to there. My memory's not good today. I don't remember exactly what I counted out, but that looks right. Four of those that should all be symmetrical, I hope. Four for those. And then you just want to go around and do the same number straight, same number diagonal, straight, and then diagonal. And that should give you with an octagon here. Uh, now, as regarding the placement of the end, uh, the end rods, uh, these should just be random. I would suggest not trying to try and replicate the, the pattern I put down here. You just want to take, uh, take whatever amount of end rods there were, and uh, you just want to use a portion of them down here at the lowest level. I'm not sure how many that is exactly. It may be 100 end rods. Maybe 75. Something like that. Take whatever amount of inner rods there is and divide that by, I don't know, 5. 5 is probably a good number for that. And you use one fifth of them uh, down below here for the stars. Now, like I said, you just want to do a random um, pattern. Like, don't try and do, you know, don't try and match this particular pattern here. Just do, the, just do them randomly. And you just want to leave them facing upwards, like so here. And, hmm, that's odd. This, it's only two block levels up. Okay, well that's an extra phase. We just did that phase. Now we're going to be going to three up from that. And the good news is on this phase, the only thing you need to do is take your black stained glass if I lower down here, you can kind of see the sheen off of it with the, the shaders and everything, with the glass and everything. You want to insert one sheet of black stained glass all throughout the level of the octagon, except at the edges. In other words, you want to take the torches that we placed down, and you want to, um, I'll use the carpet here. We want to have obsidian on the edges where we did the, all, all the counting for the, the, the carpet and everything. Just straight across there, and then straight across the, um, the diagonal there. I've kind of outlined it. It's all black, so it's hard to see, but that should help. And just fill the entire thing in with black stained glass. All right. Uh, and just ignore, ignore ignore the extra bit here we have behind that here. All this extra all this extra black obsidian and, and whatever we have back here. This doesn't matter. You just want to do the edge here and what's inside the octagon. What's outside of it doesn't matter. Uh, so now on the next phase, on top of the stained glass, you want to go around and put end rods again. You want to put them again in a random pattern. And try not to put them directly on top of a previous end rod. I mean, you can if you want to, and maybe a place or two. But on, on average, try not to do that. So take, uh, take another fifth or fourth of your end rods and put them in a random assemblage on top of the stained glass. All right, once you have done that, you want to come around and place another sandwich level of black stained glass on top of those. Just like we did with the first layer, you want to do that one more time. So you can see what we're doing is we're sandwiching these layers together. So on top of that, you want to come around again and do more end rods. On top of this next level of black stained glass, facing upwards, another fifth or fourth of your end rods. And afterwards on that, you want to then place down another sandwich level of black stained glass on top of that. You can see we're just building it up. And as we get farther and farther up, we get this nice little fog effect. 
from the stained glass because we can see these these end rods down there are much fainter than the ones we have up here and that gives us a, a bit of a pers perspective effect that uh, it's actually um, if you if you if you look up here down you can kind of you know if you if you imagine real hard you can you can imagine that we're just looking off into space down there All right, the next level up from that, we want to do again another layer of end, end rods facing upwards on top of the black stained glass. And then you want to put one final layer of black stained glass on top of the, all of those end rods. And around the edge, instead of placing obsidian now, you want to place the cobbled deep slate. This is going to go right on top of the measurements we did for the obsidian uh, octagon that we did uh, down there below. So you can see we have a nice pleasing octagonal space down there just you know just just looking straight off into the the vast starry expanse. All right so uh, for the next level we are now going to do the floor. And uh, the floor level here, as if you remember from, from previously, this should be 10 blocks from where we started. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And uh, the 10th block right there. Uh, so the air will start up here at 11. So you probably need to clear up to 11 to block 12 uh, from here on out. So that uh, you can be able to walk on everything. Uh, so here's the pattern for the floor design from the hallway. If you've already got your hallway built, you've already got this. I'm just showing it so you can tie into it. And then from here, we have another repeating pattern. So let me um, hide that for a moment and show it to you. We have a lot of extra um, glowstone here because these glowstone crosses right there, this is where the pillars are going to be put for the columns for the hallway. We have a number of pillars and a, a number of pilasters along the wall. So these here along the wall, those are the pilasters, and we have the pillars freestanding in the middle. We have, uh, what is it, uh, one, two, three, four, eight, uh, we have, what, 12 freestanding pillars and uh, several more pilasters in the corner. There should be 12, probably 16 pilasters, I think. Uh, but for the moment, we are putting in the floor pattern so uh, we can just pause over this, and it's uh, all the blocks are high contrast enough that you're going to be able to count those pretty easy. But let me lower down a bit, make it a little bit bigger in case you have a smaller screen that you're watching on. Right here. And uh, let me now get some altitude, because we can see that once we've done one of those, we want to take that pattern in the middle and repeat it to the left and the right, uh, two more times on either side for a total of four. Okay? And then along the far wall, we then want to repeat the pattern again. Right there. We'll take a look at the diagonal sections in a moment. But then we repeat the pattern again, and again, and again, and then straight across at the back there, just like we did at the front. You want to do another complete section of five modules, okay? Uh, and there's a, a there's a bit extra there for the throne room, well for the for the throne um, the raised uh, portion for the throne. All right, so let's uh, lower down here. Let's take a look now at uh, what the diagonal section should should look like. It's just the, it's the repeating pattern again, but we have the cobbled deep slate for the diagonal section, uh, cutting it off right there. And this cobbled deep slate goes right on top of the previous cobbled deep slate that we just put down. Right there. So we get a nice gradient effect here from the deep slate and the deep slate plus the stained glass and then below that it's just all the obsidian and everything or, or blackstone. Blackstone will look just as good. Unless you have a texture pack. Then it might look a little bit strange but
All right, so now over here, let's take a look. We have this uh, protruding section here for the throne, uh, for the raised dais for the throne. I didn't extend that all the way down into the starry field. I just have it sort of, you know, hanging over it. Uh, but here, this should be, uh, you can take a, a number here from the, um, well, let's see. Uh, you should have uh, this pattern here complete. So from the middle section there of that, let's count over for what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we want to come out for two blocks and then go for a diagonal of one, two, three, four, five, six, and a straight run of one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, eight, nine, twelve. 15 blocks, and then back here for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, well, 6, and then 2 straight here, and then all the way back over to here. All right. So this is going to take a long time to build because we've got all the various repeating patterns and everything. And if it's uh, if it's useful to you, let me get a, quite a lot of altitude here and show you the entire thing uh, in um, profile. There we are. So that's what our floor should end up looking like. And uh, it might be useful to you if I do some some measurements in between these glowstone crosses. Now that I'm looking at it. So here, if this is going to be from the middle of the columns, we want to count out, counting this one here for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 28, 29 blocks. So it should be 29 blocks between all of the crosses, and those should, those should come out in a square. Because you can see here, the, we just have a square pattern right there, and they will interlock with each other on the edges. Okay. So, quite a lot of explanation on that one. We have uh, quite a lot more explanation to do on this one. Here, you can see, let's take, uh, uh, let's look at the overview of this first. So here, we can see what we're doing is we have, uh, we're putting in the, the very lowermost portions of all the wall panels. We're going to be adding in the pilasters. We're going to be putting in the bases for the columns and also the bases for the statues. And of course, the statues for these are, are optional. Uh, you can you can use uh, different statues. You can use different different types of the dwarven statues. Uh, just you know, however you want to change and modify the dwarven statues. If you want to eliminate the dwarven statues, we can do that too. Uh, I will just leave that up to you as to exactly how you want to decorate it. That's 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 one thing that's just optional inside this room. Otherwise, everything else is kind of kind of required. All right, so let's lower down. Let's I think take from here from our starting and connecting connecting point here. Uh, let's take it along the wall right here on either side of the doorway. Take a look here at the glowstone. Well, the glowstone. I mean, there is some glowstone, but from the gold door to the rest of the blocks here. Now, for this, we just really want to build the exterior portions of this, and in most places, we do want to build this little bit of glowstone. Uh, but you, you want, you're going to want to build everything here. Uh, you don't have to build this extra cobbled deep slate on the outside, but you do need to build back up here at this level. Uh, here we have the, um, uh, the the plaster base. We have five blocks or four straight across here. And turn the corner and go for one, two, three, four, five, six, and in the middle for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back here for six again, and build this little section. Everything back here, four blocks across there, and then for one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven blocks. Build uh, this little section here with the glowstone. 
And then here, this is going to be another 6, another 7, um, another 6, and another one of these here. Okay, so now that we've done one of those right here, this from here to here is a module. So we want to build one module there, and then one module back here. But you can see this is the corner. So instead of building from uh, that there, we want to then build four one two three four five six, and then turn four one two three four five, and then turn the corner and uh, start building this way, and build another module there. You can use the pattern we've already laid down for the floor to help you with some of the the spacing for this. Okay, so build another module and another plaster. Another a wall panel module there, and another plaster. Another a wall panel and a plaster, and a wall panel and a plaster, and a wall panel and a corner column. So if we zoom out on that a bit, we can see that what we have just done is we have built uh, five wall panels and uh, four central plasters and two on the corner. Okay, so now that we've done one of those, you want to continue with that same design, turn the corner there along the back, and build again five panels and uh, six pilasters, including the, the corners. Turn the corner again, you want to go again for five wall panels and uh, six pilasters. And across the front there, we want to go for the same until we get all the way back here to the middle, where it's just a little bit different here, right here where it adjoins to our corridor. Now, if you want to have more corridors radiating off of this, you can take this module here for the corridor, and you could put a corridor either here, or in the middle, or one back down there. Or conversely, you could put one, one there, and perhaps one there. Or depending on what the, the how big of a room you want to put over there, you could just put one in the middle here, or you could just put one at the back there, or you could just put one at the back there, and over there in those corners, or you could just put one just straight behind the throne room if you want to as well. If you perhaps want to build a big treasury back there, behind your throne room, that'd be a good place for it if you want to just have, you know, uh, just a corridor mirrored on the other side, right back there. Now, because everyone's going to be doing differently, the best I can do is show you the patterns of this, and I will have to leave it to you to decide exactly how uh, how many corridors you want to have radiating off, radiating off of your throne room. Uh, okay, uh, so the next section here, we want to place the base for uh, the freestanding columns, and those are going to be what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you can see here from the gap in the floor pattern uh, you, for, that you've already placed down exactly where these are going to go. So if I go back to this previous phase for a moment, just place down a little wool back over here. We can, oh, a little bit too much. We can see where the column bases are going to be going. Just right there in the floor pattern. Okay. So uh, then you want to go around and build another, uh, what, eight? You want to go around and build another 10 of those. And then back here, we need to take a look at the base for the uh, the throne. Uh, so let's go back here. So for this section for the cobbled deep slate, you want to raise that up just a little bit right there, and then go for one, two, three, four, five, six. Turn the corner. Go for four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four. One, two. Two, three, four, five, six. Then run diagonally for one, two, three, four, five. 
and then right here for two, and then straight across here we have what? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So where I marked the wool here, this should fall straight on the center line. Right there. This should be bang straight between here and your corridor to the entrance to your throne room. And behind that, we're going to need a bit more black stone as well. Just right there and a little extra detail of it right there. Otherwise, the rest of it is just uh, plain uh, cobbled deep slate. And at this level, you can also leave a lot of this hollow uh, back here as well. And you can, you can pick up some of the extra floor back there too for that. Uh, if you want to recycle it, since it just gets covered over. Just like so. And then from the center line, we want to mirror the, the count. Just continue on back around, straight around there, until we get to the section at the front, which is just a, a uh, we're just building that straight up from what we counted over there. Okay? All right, now as regarding the placement of the statues. So the base, the bases for the statues can go pretty much wherever you want them to go. Um, but this is where uh, I chose to place them inside the, the throne room. We can see, um, we draw a line between our columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then two blocks farther back here is where we can start uh, one of the uh, statue bases. And I'll just kind of outline these. I'll just, uh, all the statue bases in here are exactly the same. So I just need to show you one of them. Uh, I'll show you the placements for the other ones though, but as far as the numbering I'm doing right here, it's all the same for every one of those statues. They don't, uh, they don't, um, they're not different until we get farther up when we start building the statue itself and not the base. So this is where that fits in into the pattern for the floor that we laid down. And there's probably going to be extra flooring underneath here. You have to build this interior stuff, but if you want to go recover some of your flooring materials down in here, you can rip that up if you want to and not just cover it over. Uh, I showed it complete with the flooring back over there in case you don't want to build the statues. Um, or you only want to build some of the statues, or you have entirely different statues you want to build. But you can see here, we're just placing them a dead center in between the, uh, the columns. We have one over there by the doorway, another one over there, and then we have three right here. And then we have the, one, the two with the shield on the back here. They all, have the, they all have the same numbering and placements relative to the freestanding columns that I measured out over there, and they all have the exact same numbering on the bases. So, that was a lot of talking. I hope that made sense. I will leave it to you to decide exactly how you want to lay out your own personal throne room. And uh, with that, we will move on to the next phase. Uh, so let's start over here at the doorway, right here. And a lot of this is now, for the next several phases, we'll be going straight up. So I just kind of have to show you. We just we have the little hidden lighting back here with the glowstone. And the cobbled deep slate is just being extended straight up right there. More hidden lighting there. And then we want to set this back a block and then just run straight for the cobbled deep slate for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 blocks. We'll have another little light well back here and another column base extending straight up. Got the piece of a light well, another, what was that, 11 blocks straight across there. The light well. And then here we have the corner column. Extend that straight up. And from here on out, you already, you already know what we need because we're just building the modules again. We're just building the next level of the wall modules. And we've already placed down everything. Everything is going straight up with cobbled deep slate, except here in the central panel where it's recessed by one block. And back over here in these little light wells with the hidden glowstone when we have some black stone or obsidian behind those. So for everything we laid out and measured laboriously in the previous phase, you want to go around and extend up the panels according to the same repeating patterns that we have here. Then just turn the corner, 
and continue to repeat the patterns all the way around the perimeter of the room right here until you get all the way back around to the entrance whereupon we're just repeating the little bit here that we started with. All right, so for the statue base, uh, extend everything up one block level with black stone. For the column bases for all of those around the room. For all of the central freestanding pillars, extend these up again, just, as, just the big square of cobbled deep slate to the second block level. All right, back over here for the throne, for the raised dais for the throne. Uh, we'll start here, extend up just all the cobbled deep slate that we have here. And behind that, we want to then build this little section of, uh, of raised flooring right there. And then behind that, we want to extend up the, the column base and extend up this again. Build the same as you did at the front there, this little raised section of flooring. And then over here, we of course have the steps up to your throne. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Straight across there. Cobble deep slate and then black stone and then cobble deep slate and then black stone. Although if you want to write right along here, you could just put a cobble deep slate slabs instead. Or maybe some black stone slabs or something right there, and then you'd probably want to have those uh, right, right along here as well, just so you don't have to keep, uh, you know, just so you don't have to pop up the steps. You can just go them, go uh, up that way. All right, so that's half of it. So to mirror the design again on the other half, same numbering, same everything, just mirrored image. And uh, we can go on to the next phase. I think we can cram a few more phases in today. So let's start over here back at the doorway. Uh, right there. And we've got a little uh, red another brick here cut out behind that. And we have here the bases. You want to build everything we see here for the black stone, and I think we want to build everything we see. For the black stone and the red nether brick. Let me take a look at that before I tell you and it's wrong. Okay. So they're extra behind that, so we just want to build um, the first, uh, the, what's visible. Right, um, right there, you don't need don't particularly need uh, this extra stuff back here. Uh, so here's here's the design pattern we want with the uh, the black stone right there, and uh, the bit more of the the light well, and also uh, the the lowermost sections of the wall panels. If you've done any of the mines and mooring tutorials, you're familiar with these wall panels. They have a different design now, so. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's variation on the theme. It's, it's the same design, but different. So they're set one block level back again. Back down here, recessed one block level. And according to that pattern there. And of course, remember this, uh, this back here, this should be right up against the wall. These aren't included in the, in the, in the dimensions. These are just extra blocks back here to help you count as we go for, you know, like an extra visual aid. Just like so. And let's pan around. And actually, once I show you from, really from here to, what is it gonna be? Right here, this can be half of a module. So once you have this down, you want to mirror image that and repeat it for that there. And then you can repeat the entire module again, right here. And here's the bit for the corner. And then turn, and you know the drill, do the repeating patterns again for another five wall panels and six pilasters. Then down there, turn the corner again, do the far wall, the side wall, 
and then here when we get back around to the doorway right here and that's all the way around the room uh, so for the statues uh, uh, black stone extend up one more level all the statue bases for the freestanding uh, pillars we want to do this simple pattern here I think that's going to be what five by five in the middle just like so and do that the same for all um, all ten of the freestanding pillars and then we have this section here for uh, the raised dais for the, th the throne. Uh, so let's start right here. Uh, now a lot of this uh, back here you don't need. This is just extra filler blocks. We just need to build what's visible here at the surface that the torches are sitting on top of for what one tooth. Well it's, this is just straight across right there. And then turn the corner and go for one, two, three. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, and then here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we want to build. We want to build all of this, all this cross, all that across there. And I think uh, I think once once we get behind behind that, you can probably just just forget about that extra. You just want to build what's visible here at the front. All right, I think that that's, uh, that's all I can help with on that phase. So let's go on to another one. And we'll start, of course, here at, at the doorway. So I'll just pan around here and show you the patterns. Most of this is going straight up. With only minor differences in the, in the details here for the modules. And here for the wall panels. All right, so we turn the corner here, and here we have, of course, the rest of the, the panel module and the pilasters, and you know, you, you know the drill. Repeat the re repeat the repeating patterns all the way around the room until you get back to the door. All right, for all the statue bases, extend everything up another level, cobble deep slate all the way around every one of those. Uh, same deal for the, uh, the freestanding pillars, just like so. All right, here we want to, on top of the uh, obsidian and or blackstone, put red nether brick just at the front. You don't you don't need what's behind here for that. Just here at the front, what we see that's going to be visible at the front right here and then here you can see for our stairs it's another repeating pattern we're just moving it one block up and two blocks farther back see all right Next phase here, starting at the door. And let's pan around and take a look at the patterns. Now, we don't have blocks right, right here. I'll just put a little carpet there. So you can see it. Sometimes uh, the black against each other, it's hard to see. And the detail for the wall panel. And then here for the bases of the pilasters. And 
and here at the, at the corner. And then turn the corner and you know the drill repeat the patterns all the way around the room till you get back to the door. Uh, here's the next level up for the statue bases. Like so, you want to cut back one block and place just cobbled deep slate all around the perimeter. Every one of those. Uh, here's the detail for the freestanding uh, columns. It's the same as the wall, you're just doing it on four sides. In the plasters, you do it on three, and then in the corners, you only do it on two. Uh, so back over here on top of all the red nether brick, just place a uh, blackstone. Forget what's behind there, just place the exterior portion, like you see done here. And repeat the pattern for the stairs, one block up and two blocks farther back. All right, let's go on to uh, another phase. Uh, so here at the doorway, building a little arch for the door, like so. And then let's take a look at the repeating pattern. We've got another cutout right there at the front on those. Right there. And then the detail for the wall panel. And then the column base, and just another column base and another wall panel. And here the column squished into, I mean the, the, the plaster squished into the corner. Like so, and then repeat the patterns. Again, all the way around the room till you get to the doorway. Uh, so here now for the statue base. Um... Right there. We want to place down that pattern for the red nether brick. And we're going to have four blocks of a uh, couple deep slate right there on the corners. And then uh, that's all there is to that. Go around and do the same for all the other statue bases. Uh, here is the uh, detail for the freestanding pillars. Right there, one side of these, once you do one side, the other three sides are exactly the same. Let's go over here to the raised dais for the throne. Uh, just uh, uh, throw down a slab of cobbled deep slate just on top of all that. Except over here at the corners. And uh, never mind the extra obsidian there in the middle. All right. Let's go on to another phase. We'll start over here at the doorway like we've been doing. And then here the detail for the pilaster. Pretty simple detailing. Same deal for the wall panel. And here for the pilaster, and the wall panel, and the corner column. And from here on out, you know what to do. Repeat the patterns all the way all the way around the room until you get back to the doorway. Uh, here's the detail for the pillar. Just simple detailing. Big square with the corners cut out. I'll extend all the red nether brick up for the statue bases. And add just this little decorative uh, touch here with some gold ore and and uh, cobbled deep slate there on all four of the faces. Now here for the raised dais for the throne chair, we're building now the floor that your throne is going to sit on. So on the edges, we want to build up the cobbled deep slate, and then at the front here, we want to put this little pattern on top right there from the front. And then here from the edges, we have, uh, this is more complicated than it needs to be back here, probably. But I'll show it to you so you can get all the numbering of it correct.
another portion to our stairway. And uh, that, that's all there's to see on that one. Let's head over here and do another one where we're connecting uh, now our our doorway. So we'll just start right on the center line right here. And here's the next detailing for the pilasters. Right there, and then the de detailing for the wall panel. Then build another pilaster base, then another wall panel, and here we are at the corner. And you know what to do. Repeat everything all the way around the room. After you have done that, here is the next detailing for the base for the statue. Just like so. Once you do one quadrant of that, the other three quarters are the same. And here is the simple detailing for the columns. All right, so back over here, we, we can put down now the first diamond block for our throne chair right there. And over here we have, uh, I did nether rack for these, uh, but if you want to, instead of, uh, you could just place whatever block down there and at this level, you can place uh, some uh, some campfires. Perhaps you like the blue campfires you could put down there, or the red ones. It's just whichever whichever type of campfire you would prefer to use might look, might look nice. You can have some nice uh, some nice ominous uh, smoke pots on either side of your throne. Very mysterious. Uh, back over here, let's take a look now. So we have remember that nether portal we have behind the throne. Let's actually go, let's actually attack this from the back. So we have our stairs that we've been building. Four, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we, when we get up here, so that's on the center line, we then want to place, uh, we're going to need some obsidian for this because it's, I mean, it's another portal. You can't use blackstone for that. So you are going to need some portion of obsidian for the portal. Uh, this is covered in more detail in the Dwarven Nether Portal tutorial, uh, but we're, we're also going to cover it here. But it, it, it's squished into the uh, the wall the, in between these two columns, so it's not it's not quite the same. Uh, but then we want to come out uh, behind your throne chair. We want to go for a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and on the what the be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then that would be uh, block 16. Right there. And then the rest of that, here's the detailing for the complicated uh, section where I squished the nether portal in between the columns. Some of these interior blocks back here you probably you probably don't need. Um, But yeah, that's about it. That's about all I can say about that. Uh, let's go on to uh, another phase. Start over here at the doorway. Try and throw down a torch on the center line just to be consistent. We'll take a look at the next section. So we got uh, three blocks of obsidian right here, and then just a little cross pattern of cobbled deep slate right there behind those. And then back behind there, here's the detailing for the wall panel. And then build another column base, another wall panel. And here we are in the corner. Right there, and then repeat the patterns all the way around the room. Uh, here's the detailing for the freestanding pillars. Right there. And the detailing for the statue bases. All right, back over here. The second diamond block for your throne. And it's made out of quartz, so just go around there for that. And like I said, over here, if you don't want the fire, you can put uh, a campfire. 
there where the torch is. Uh, so back here is uh, the lowermost portions of our nether portal. Uh, I left uh, the nether portal blocks here just so you could see exactly where the portal goes in relation to, to all of the very dark blocks here. Uh, but you're obviously, you know, you, you can't place down another portal blocks, so. I'll give you a good look at, at the patterns here. Just like so, and uh, we'll go on another phase. We'll do maybe a couple more phases. We'll at least finish the throne chair, and that's probably where we'll stop. Uh, so back over here, a couple deep slides just straight across doorway there. And here's the detailing for the panels and the uh, plasters. Just a big square, 5 by 5 a couple of deep slate for the plasters. Simple detailing here for the wall panel. Another plaster, another wall panel, and here in the corner, and you know the drill after that. Uh, five by five for all the columns right there. And here's a simple detailing for the column bases, all of those. All right, next portion for your throne chair, another block of diamond right there, and some quartz stairs on either side. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I, for, I thought these went a far, block further up. You know, but you might want to put your campfire down there instead. Probably probably look better than up there on top of that nether rack. Uh, so here we are here back here. Let's take a look at the detailing for the nether portal as well. Now, if you don't have another portal into your main base, or if you want to move the nether portal into your main base, uh, this would be a good spot for it because then you would come right out of the nether into your grand throne room. It would also give you a, a good use for your throne room other than just, you know, you just, you, um, other than just sitting there looking pretty, you can uh, also use it as the entrance and exit to your nether. Uh, and indeed, if you're playing in creative, and you can. You could just uh, stand. You could just stand here and uh, place uh, some, some what? I mean, I, I know if you're doing this in survival, you can't do it. But like, if you're doing this in, um, well, I think down here. If you're doing this in creative, if you wanted to, you could add this little extra back down there. Take out those blocks. And you could have an end portal right behind your throne chair. So if someone comes in, one of your enemies, and you need to make a quick getaway, well, there you are. Or you could also escape into the nether. You've got various, various options of uh, avenues of escape from here if you need them. Uh, let's go into another phase. I think this is going to be the last one for today. I'll finish the throne chair. Go over here, take a look at the doorway. Torch on the center line. Detailing for the wall panel. Uh, what's that going to be? That's That looks like the 7x7 seven seven for the plasters. Cobbled deep slate. And then here for the wall panels. Then a 7x7 seven seven for the plaster, another wall panel, and over here for the corner column. And then just seven by seven here, big square for all the for all the columns in the room, all ten of those. And here again, deep slate for statue base. Now over here to finish off your throne, put one quartz stair on top of those, just like so. Let's take back here. Let's take a look at the details for the the ornamental nether portal behind the throne. Just like so. 
And uh, I believe that uh, we've done quite a lot today. So I think that that is where we are going to cut off for today. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.